Hi everyone, we are discussing the differences that our eye makeup can make and the way we look, the way we age, whether we look awake, whether we look have a bigger looking eye, whether it looks more open. And what I'm gonna do is I will not have this eye done during the tutorial. This eye is going to completely be done. But you're going to be able to see me in action do this eye. I'm gonna explain to you all the differences and the reasons why I'm doing it this way as compared to this way. So I hope that you do enjoy this today. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. And if you're new to my channel, special welcome to you. Thanks for being here. I hope that you do decide to subscribe. Let's get into this tutorial right now so you can see how to make your eye look bigger, how to make it look open and awake and take about 10 years off of your makeup look in the process. All right, the first difference right here is the eyebrows. Now take a look at this eyebrow. It's a little bit thinner, it's very rounded, and I stopped it right here where my own eyebrow does stop with its hair. But I should have brought it out here and made a tiny bit of an arch and gone above if I could to kind of give this a lifted look. So if you look on this one right here, what you're seeing is I brought all this hair out here, fluffed it up. I had a little bit extra on the top right there, did a little bit of a pointed arch, not a lot, but a little bit. And on this part right here that you can see that this is turned down a little bit, I kept that just a little bit higher, a little bit fluffier, and then I brought the tail out. Now my own eyebrow doesn't come out this far it does stop before the eye so that is one thing to keep in mind um, is definitely eyebrows are important a little bit thicker helps and the fact that we're pushing it up or you know making that little arch right there where we can um, kind of bring a lift to our eyes so you can already see how these two eyes are different as far as that goes all right so the next thing that we're going to look at is the waterline now as you can see right here i put black into the waterline I wore black in my waterline for years and years and absolutely loved it, loved the smoky look about it. But when I made this one small transition, it made all the difference in the world. And that is to put a very light pencil into the waterline, one that is either cream or light pink or light peach, and it really nude, it really does lighten everything up. So definitely putting a very light color in the waterline will immediately open up that eye and make it look bigger okay this next thing is we went too dark on this eye. so the I first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about transition color and i'm going to go this is the miss bliss bliss palette and i did use this on this eye however it got really dark because i came in with a different one but we'll talk about that in a second so i'm going to go into the lightest color over here which is a very very light pink this is going to be my transition color and i'm just using a very fluffy blending brush this one is from zoeva nothing um, specific about that whatever blending brush you have will be fine but i will make sure that i list all these below so that you know what i'm talking about and make sure you tap that off so you don't get too much too fast and this is going to be my transition color so i am making sure that i come out here by the tail of that brow and i am putting that transition color a lot above the crease this is not a color that I want to be get lost in the crease. This is a color that I want to make sure that is seen because it's so light and it's so pretty, it's going to help lift the eye. Now, let me say before we go any further, I do have a palsy in my hands, so I am not nervous today. I just have a disability in my hands. So keep that in mind as you're watching me and you might think, oh my goodness, she is so nervous. I'm not really nervous, I just have that disability. So this is the second coat of this. I actually don't do windshield wiper motions because I find that with my eyes It has a tendency to move the actual skin the skin moves there So I just kind of do a dabbing motion a stippling motion and go across there and I am bringing that color over into the eye but not all the way into the inner eye because if you got pink over there you might look like it's really dark and really, you know, not has a lot of light there. So build this up to where you have a pretty arch with it. And I'm bringing it out to the tail right here of the eyebrow so you guys know that. All right, now I'm gonna switch palettes and I'm gonna go in with all things Equinox and I'm gonna go into this lavender color right here, which is a kind of a, for me, if you're deeper, it's not gonna be, but for me, it's a medium light lavender and I'm going to get just a, a medium fluffy brush. This is one is from Luxie um, and I'm gonna fill that brush up. And again, I'm just bringing this about midway and I'm doing exactly what I did with the actual pink shade 
but I'm going, you know, just a little bit lower. Now out here on the outer eye, I'm going to pull this up towards the tail end of the brow. All right, so on the next one, I'm gonna go in with a shader brush. This is kind of a domed shader brush. And I'm gonna go in with the color right here that is kind of a deeper mauve. Tapping off that brush is always important. And I'm going to bring this down onto the third of the outer eye lid. And then I'm going to bring it up into the crease. But I am not using this anywhere halfway in. So I'm leaving all of this color halfway out on the eye total. And if you look at the two eyes, look how bright this is. Look how much less product I used, less color I used, and we're just really lightening everything up. So I started off with a lighter color. I'm using a lighter color all the way through. One that matches my very fair to light skin tone. And it does help that color to look more like just a deeper color of the eyeshadow that I'm using instead of getting really dark really fast like I did on this eye over here. So again, pulling that up ever so slightly to blend it with the, the first colors that I did use, you can see that I have hardly any color right there. There, It's really soft, but, but at the same time, it's a lot of shading, a lot of light, a lot of different colors really blended well, whereas this eye just looks dark. It just looks like that black color that I, I have on there just overtook the whole look. All right, now I'm gonna go into this color right here, and I'm just gonna pick that up on my finger, and if you've been with me for very long, you know that I like to use my finger to put my lid colors down but you know that I also do spray my finger with a setting spray to make that color a little bit brighter. And so I'm gonna go all the way in to right where that other color was starting. And really I'm just kind of taking my finger and pushing it down instead of pulling it across. Pulling that color across is gonna make you lose some of that vibrancy of that color, that brightness of that color. Now I'm just gonna go back in and kind of just really blend that so that there's no harsh, dark edges there. Okay, here's the next trick. In this eye over here, I didn't put any lightness. Now when I did that, it kind of got a little bit in there anyway, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same color, I'm gonna take it on my reefer brush, um, this is number 02. It's just kind of a flat shader brush. I really love this brush. And I'm going to spray it just a little bit so again the color becomes vibrant. And I'm going to go down in here to do my inner corner. Now I have some people ask me how you do an inner corner. This is it guys. So you're going to take this brush and uh, the easiest way for me to do this with my shaking hands to get it exactly where I want it to be is to just lay it in there on its side, not flat, but on its side lay it in there and just push that color over from the inner edge of the eye. So you're kind of just not really gonna go like this and this with it. You're just kind of gonna push the color a little bit into there. I have my monitor right here. Forgive me for glancing over there. I know that that's really distracting when people do that. But that is really what you need to do is make sure that that color is pushed over just a little bit to make sure that that brightness is right there down into that inner eye area. Now on the bottom lash line, I'm going to take my, this is Wanna Get Lucky from Ardell liner and this one is in purple. And I'm going to just take this liner and again, forgive my shaking, guys. And this one is going to come out here about a quarter of the way. So I am laying down color, but I'm not coming more than a quarter of the way in the eye. And now and I'm going to take a rounded smudge brush. Um, this is very dense, very thin, very short. This also was from Zoeva and I'll list it. And I'm going to just take this brush and I'm going to lay it down there straight. And I'm going to start to work this from the outer eye into that inner eye and I'm just smudging it out. So there's not going to be a stark line here for my eyeliner. There's going to be a nice smudge, nice soft look right there. And I am pulling it over, but I'm only pulling it over about two thirds of the way underneath the eye there. So there you can see that it just got smudged out a lot and I kept it a lot thinner. So it's kind of pulling up too. It's not coming down like this one is. So it's kind of just going up towards that tail or pointing up towards that tail because I didn't darken this right here on the outer corner. I'm going to go back down into this color that I used to darken up the outer part of my eye a little bit. And I'm just going to put this over the top of the eyeliner to kind of make it budge proof. It shouldn't darken it too much. It will darken it a tiny bit, but at the same time, that's just insurance 
to make sure that that won't smudge down. It really does help a lot. And then the eyeliner. Eyeliner can be a yes or a no. If you don't like the look of it, you don't have to use it. However, I like it because I like it to make my eyelashes look really thick. And that's what it does when you keep it super tight on your eyelash line down there. So I'm gonna go on top of my lashes. So like because my hands do shake, I just take that and I lay it down and I push the lashes down as I'm going across and I'm coming out there and I got a little bit too thick right there. Oh shoot, okay, I can fix that. But what I wanna show you is that you're gonna stay away from this outer part about a quarter inch. So instead of arching it and coming all the way down or even trying to do a winged liner or anything, I'm gonna stay away from that part because what happens is when you pull that down, the eye look will be pulled down too. That's what's gonna make it look downturned. And that's what this did right here. I came all the way out to the to where it connects with the bottom lash line. And it really did look like it was pulling that eye down. And this one is going to look more lifted because it did it. Now I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna fix that little divot that I got right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do my mascara, a couple coats of mascara, and I'll be right back to talk with you, show you the finished look, and we'll talk about the differences again. Okay, everyone, there's the finished look. Let's talk about this just a little bit. Eyebrow lifted a little bit more, little bit thicker, little bit of a point in there. Waterline, a really beautiful nude or a pink in there, light, light pink in there is really great for you. Keeping your colors lighter, making sure that those colors are a lot lighter and that they are pulled up. This one, you can see that the color doesn't come up as far right here towards the tail. Putting a light color on the lid, how important was that? Look at the difference in the two. This eye just looks open and awake. It looks younger, it looks more rested. And I really think that that's really important. The underneath liner, the eyeliner itself on the bottom, smudging it out, but only making the thickness of it about a quarter of the way or a third of the way out here, and then really smudging it across to make a much lighter line than if you're doing a smoky eye. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's nothing wrong with a smoky eye. I love this look as well. Maybe not the, the actual darkness on the eyelid, but I really enjoy this look sometimes for a more dramatic look. Maybe you're going out, maybe Maybe you want something more dramatic for the day. There's nothing wrong with that. But I have found that doing my makeup lately, this has made such a huge difference. Lightening everything up, pulling everything upward and making that eye look more youthful, more awake, and just really has helped me so much. So I hope that you did enjoy this video today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know in the comment section what you think, whether you think that either eye looks better. I'm okay with that too. I don't mind any input whatsoever. And I hope everybody is staying happy, staying healthy, stay safe, sanitized, all those good things. I hope that everybody is doing well. Love you so very much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye you guys.